Hello. Welcome to Law Master's Lair. I'm your Law Master, here today for our exploration of the world of the Lion. There are many nations you want to avoid in the inner sea region, with one of the most dangerous being the nation where the Winter Witches and the Witch Queen Baba Yaga loom large, Irisin. Without further ado, let's get started. Long ago, the land of Lunorm King stretched further east than it does today. Two more kingdoms stood in place, the nation of Remerund and the Dejotsa Confederacy. They stood until the day Baba Yaga arrived with from parts unknown, supported by an army of trolls, ice giants, winter wolves, and ice fae. The overwhelming force brought down both nations in under a month. Many imagined it would have only taken a little more time to conquer the lands of the Norm Kings in full, and from there, all of Avastan. That is, if Baba Yaga would not have gotten bored. She organized the land they had conquered into a country, put her daughter in charge, then left. The daughter, Yadwiga, ruled as a tyrant, put her own children in positions of power, and enjoyed the cruelty and luxury she was afforded. Then, a hundred years later, Baba Yaga came back, collected Yadwiga and her children, and put another daughter in place. And so the cycle continues to this day. Recently it was Princess Anastasia from a distant planet who has taken the throne, beginning a new 100 year reign and the first one with a granddaughter instead of a daughter on the throne. And for the first time in a while, people are hopeful there will be less misery during this reign. Hopefully. Which while we are in the land of Baba Yaga, let's spend today's first side tangent talking about one of her main enemies, Kochetsky, the Deathless Frost. The man was once an orphan and a warlord, his path paved in blood, who feared his own death one day. He tracked down Baba Yaga and forced her to give him immortality, which she did, but also twisted him into the hideous form of a deformed frost giant. He fled to the outer rifts to hide his disfigured form, but when he arrived he kept fighting, and kept fighting, until the day he found himself too a demon. Now he stands in his fortress of Skyscar, patron of those frost giants who turned against the mirror, but only really caring about one thing, revenge. Irisin has a strict hierarchy. The Yardriga are at the top, with the descendants of the current queen being at the highest position, and the Edda Yardriga at lesser positions. The allied monsters are just below them, the ones I mentioned earlier, the Ice Trolls, Winter Wolves, Ice Fae, and Ice Giants. Then, below them are the visitors and foreigners, the first group which needs to tread lightly in the lands. And at the bottom, we have the orphan descendants and descendants of ancestries which are common elf elsewhere, like dwarfs. This last one, peasants, have little to no rights, and are either useful or scrapped. Though some local lords might just kill them for fun, depending on where in the nation they are. We first find ourselves in Thornhold as we look across the nation, the region which is home to the capital of the Yardriga Kingdom. The capital itself, White Throne, sits on the north shore of Glacial Lake, the main source of food in the region, and is, and the city is also home to the Corn Crane. So going through the area of Thornhold clockwise, Hegby is the last stop for all shipments to White Throne coming from the west. And the Duchess of the region makes sure all the liveries are perfect. Ladachin is at the mouth of the Frost River and is responsible for trade going down it. 
Vladeland is the only peasant town adjacent to the Feyetros, and the abduction showed well. Coldwater sits on the edge with the realm of the Mammoth Lords, and even now and, and then the foolish peasants would try to make a run for it, usually at a cost. The Palaran Stones are a monument to what happens when a daughter tries to resist Fabiaga's abductions, a war that lasts but a day. Ledenicha returns us to Glacier Lake, the city sitting on the Marble Flow River. Rakamestro recently was slaughtered when it was discovered the local lords were cheating the throne. And Yara Jona is the last trade stop before right throne from the south. And it is rich because of it. Now, before we go north or south, let us instead go east and look at side tangent 2. We will be covering six provinces today, but there was a time when there was a seventh, Rhyme Tusk. The then queen started a war with the land of the Mammoth Lords, and managed to capture the land all the way to Tusk Mountain's base, reorganizing it into Rim Tusk and Rhyme Tusk, and building the capital of Tashgrat. However, the win was short-lived, as a short war known as Desna's Revenge had a priest of Desna leading an enormous force to push Irisin back across the cold water river. The city of Toshagot still sits today in ruin. The ghosts that haunted a testament to the current and foreseeable future reaches of the kingdom of eternal winter. Now, Going through more provinces, let's start with the south of Thornhold, which is Horwood, the ancient land of orphan druids and the land where rebellion still thrives, even if hidden. Horwood, the capital of the region, is called from one of the orphan sacred trees, and it itself is in the thick Horwood forest, where the nation gets most of its wood. Also in the forest, Crow Top is the final home of another old rebellion, but the haunted town has not rotted in the hundreds of years. Same with the old capital of the open nation, Vonash, which now lately is in ruins. Walsby is on the edge, being the main lumber camp, the edge of the forest, but it is the northernmost Ludovni, which jealously holds credit for actually supplying the wood to the capital, even if it means sabotaging two other main, main trade towns, Lord and Damothorpe. Another that's on the Marble Flow River, along with Reba, is a superstitious town and home to Phrasma's faith in the faithless lands of this nation. Now, swinging around south is the Rich Eaves, a twisted cave where Rebel Yard Riga were once twisted into monsters. Nadzivja Lato, home to Vrissian traders, and Kizabran, a changing rural town, both sit on the Gulak River. Finally, in a smaller eastern forest sits the spider's nest, home to, as the name suggests, a swarm of monstrous spiders. The Feyfrost is the northern lands given to the Fey allies of Baba Yaga. The capital, Chilbright, is the second largest city in Eosin, though it has been ruled by a mad red cap king for centuries. Following the frozen road, the river which separates the region from Thornhold, we find Iselda, which sells authentic Kellid goods, and Bosraka, another town forever looking at the land of the, of the Mammoth Lords. Headed north are the crevice fields, which are large, fractured glacial fields where we can find Kazani Las, which is home to a conservation school the Cathedral of 
Oblosh, which is home to a mad mage, it, which it's named after, and Lashka, one of the cooler villages. Definitely one of the last places you want to actually live in. In the Winterwell Glacier to the north, one finds the Palace of the Brumal Lords, which are a home of three boogeymen driven insane, and Herringer's Keep, home to Baba Yaga's frost giant allies. Finally, the Bosser's Pit, known as Phase End, is to the very west of this province. Tristed, Tristing, all who tried to explore it. Going to the northwest corner of the nation, we find ourselves in Bleak March. Here is the wilderness where hunting is in its greatest mass. The capital of this province is Egelhort, a city made completely vertically with the more powerful living the higher up. Going counterclockwise, we find, first come to Carad, the with a city with little prestige. Not really anything to say about it, but it's followed by Helfgen, who are forced to serve both the Yardriga and the trolls of Skrag Deep. And then Advan, a land where indiscretions by a lord and lady are all that really happens here. Before finally reaching the ice breaking monopoly of Trezira. Trezira. <laughs> Lot of names today. To the north along the Winterwall Glacier again, one finds Horvagang, which is the seat of the Frost Giants of all of Galorian, and Frost Giant's Fist, home to an undead Frost Giant warlord. Kind of wish I did this and Giants back to back last month, but stop finding news and everything. Finally, traveling south along the ice flow, the western border of Erison, one finds the Leela, which follow all, is, contains followers of the Way of Transcendent Bliss, also known as Worshippers of Shifkesh. Sodoras, which is home of mercenaries ready to attack the land of Norm Kings from the north. Yensa, the rare peaceful trade town on this border. And finally, the Vault of Sylvan Ice, which is a haunted mineshaft. Which leads us to our second side tangent. Sifkesh, the Lady of Heresy. Third side tangent. One might note that this demon lord looks like an Enrio from Hell. Which she was, now a fallen devil. It even gets more confusing when you realize she eats souls like a demon. Either way, her cult takes pleasure in infiltrating other faiths, and, or making new faiths, and leading people to destroy each other, or themselves. Their suicide is within Shifkash's pub, after all. Examples we have are the way of the transcendent faith down here, and the path of grace who infiltrated Eridan's faith and eventually led to the creation of the Hell Knights. And I'm sure they'll count as others in existence. Her domain is the City of Open Windows, a city costly being built as the other side crumbles off a cliff, a city said to hold a false temple to every religion. Going south, we are now at Wintercrux, with the only outer border of this region being with the Cordial Mountains, this is the heartland of Eosin, and a land built for mining and industry. The capital is Morozny, one of the main cities of the Drosor Confederacy, who was richly awarded by surrendering to Baba Yaga without a fight, and is the only major city without Baba Yaga's monster allies wandering the streets. The Plava is a small enough town where people rarely consider stopping, but some stop to keep an eye on the frost fog at Glacier Lake South Shore, a mist which is cold enough to instantly freeze anything it touches. So too does the Great Knight Volfast Raven Banner, the non Yardriga who managed to reach the highest military positions, only to be given eternal watch to the lake's southern shore from 
Mount Fast Tower. Going down the Mount Marble Flow River, we have Drobova, one of the only mainland towns after an accident with the old Duchess of the town. Iona, known mostly for its hot springs. Sosoka, whose baroness is more concerned about Veshtak and her accusations of them cheating her than ruling her own city. And Veshtak, which is 100% skimming money from traders. We then find ourselves in the Sakala foothills at the base of the Colder Mountains, which contains the massive diamond mine of Last Hope and the town of Zalto Maestro, which ships those diamonds. Finally, on the Thundering River is Seavi, the main city with, which trades with Vesalian. Dolan, the unfortunate city which has a job of trading with Iracen's ancient enemy to the west, the land of the Norm Kings, and Thane's Grave, the graves which serve as the last remnants of the Jostha Confederacy. Finally, we have the area known as the Burge. Established as a separate province from White Wintercrux to serve as the main area ready to attack the land of the Norm Kings. This area traditionally is run by the second son of the current queen, the only place where a man is guaranteed power in the nation. The capital is Red Tooth, a city made to be lived in by both humans and winter wolves. South of the city are the Three Troll, the Ice Troll City. Sostra, the site of the former peasant uprising now haunted by the burning ghosts. And Sailbottom, built as the largest armory in the region. North we find Velasia Noa, a fortress used to break soldiers who cannot give the program. Vastaburg, home of an industry of enchanting arms. Zelen, a small town known for its fishing. Gorjko, uh, no, no, a really nonsense town made to commemorate a victory as opposed to being actually livable in. And Sakota, the way station of trade on three main rivers. Which, rounding everything off, let's go with our third high tandem today. One of the main forces of Baba Yaga and Irisen, the Winter Wolves. These creatures all history tales that they were once wargs, who one way or another were touched by the frost giant god Thamir, awakening the winter in their hearts. They are specially built for the cold, anything above freezing leaving them swelter. They have both the ability of speech and the ability to transform into humanoid forms, which they use to live among humans by day at least. They are most connected to Irisen, where they are counted as trusted allies, but they can be found in, in various countries in the north, and they and orphans have a long history of hunting each other down. And that brings us to the end of today's video. I believe it for, for the NRC region, we only have Raha Dome and the land of mammoth lords left for me to cover. I'll see about the window soon. However, we are entering October. So we will still be away from countries for a while. Well, countries in the NRC region at least. As for what we'll be dealing with, this month. I guess I'll see you next time.